so many times an actor who is super enthusiastic you ask them listen are you comfortable are you uncomfortable we'll do anything hmm sure yeah yeah anything are you sure you don't have any issues uh no 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 we'll do anything would you lick this person's armpit maybe not main idhar bhi thi ho main udhar bhi thi oh shit so i'm like bhaad mein jaye plan bhaad mein jaye focus main karungi jo mujhe karna hai Hello Bani. Welcome. Welcome to After Hours with All About Eve. So so excited to be here. So excited to have you. I binged like class. Delivered. And I've, yeah, <laughs> and I've said that in a few podcasts before and I discussed it yeah. uh, with a friend with Varun Bell uh, on that. And we were discussing on what shows we've been watching and I kid you not I could not get enough of it. Really? And I loved you in it. Thank so I'm you. very very happy that you've come to have a chat with us. I'm super excited to first meet you. I've like watched your podcast. I've watched you with great skill talk to some really amazing people and I can only imagine what kind of you know like what it would require from you. You know to move between different kinds of people from different industries. So I really love the entire Thanks. balancing act and the fashion oh my god that, that nobody talks about but i've noticed like i'm you know, so yeah. you know i'm surprised you say that but of course i'm very flattered because i think anyone who is r- right now over here would know just how little like humble I care. you love a humble queen it's fine <laughs> but, yeah. but but i'm very flattered i uh, think that i engage a lot uh, more in like conversation तो मैं ऐसे ध्यान नहीं देती बट इफ यू थिंक आई लुक ग्रेट आई टेक इट मतलब हो जाते नेचुरली तो हु इज कंप्लेन हु नोबडी इज कंप्लेन नोबडी इज कंप्लेन बट या सो आई वांटेड टू फर्स्ट वी विल स्टार्ट विद क्लास एंड देन वी विल स्पीक अबाउट मेनी मेनी थिंग्स व्हाट वाज दैट लाइक फर्स्टली आई वाज क्वाइट फ्लैबरगास्टेड व्हेन आई सॉ द शो बिकॉज़ आई एम जस्ट लाइक इफ दिस इज हाउ किड्स आर आई डोंट नो हाउ आई एम गोइंग टू रेज माइन वन सेकंड आंट यू फ्रॉम दिल्ली टू आई एम फ्रॉम एमटी नोएडा Then, Nothing happened. What are you saying? I kid you not. Amity, it, Amity Noida is like notorious, right? Or is it college Amity? Noida? College Amity, perhaps, but hmm. school Amity. Ah, uh, like we used to have like a prayer in the morning, and we used to have a havan we before. We also had prayer in the morning. Before every year, you know, yeah. they would do a havan, and it used to be like you know we are the blend of modernity and tradition. I think it was a very like young school. Like I think it must have been in the second batch of Amity Noida. Hmm. Like to begin with. Okay, fair. So my fourteen years were. ऐसा तो कुछ भी नहीं था. I don't even think I saw a kid like smoking a cigarette in my school. Okay. Maybe it was Noida. Maybe it was the fact that it wasn't South Delhi. I don't know. I, I mean, um, in the NCR region, whatever schools I've come across, and whoever I've come across, five years older, my age, five years younger, have only colorful experiences. So I, I don't know. So, I don't know if I should feel bad. <laughs> yeah, you really missed out <laughs> yeah, yeah, on I being know, corrupted. Mi- missed out, not just on being corrupted, yeah. but even like the gossip and the stories. Like, is there कुछ हुआ ही नहीं कि you know I'll take that back. But uh, it was uh, iconic for several reasons. Yeah. And of course, um, one of the reasons was what the state of the youth of today is. Yes. What was it like reading that character? Um. Now I have to really go back in memory yeah. because uh, when we got the script, when we got the auditions, it was like 2019. It was just as the first lockdown was happening, hmm. and so all of it happened in a in like a very um, volatile environment where you didn't know what was happening. Were you going to be working or were you going to not have a job for two years? Yeah, true. Uh, things like that. So even like auditioning for it, then silence, then suddenly getting a WhatsApp saying, "Yeah, come to Bombay." you know after 6 months of you know bartan bajaoing doing yeah. your own jhadu pocha and everything like oh suddenly there is an opportunity that has come up that is nothing like anything i've done before and i'm being go- called to do this show that once i've read i actually really enjoyed like uh, reading material that was looking at delhi in a different light yeah and also coming of age show but not like bubble, bubble gum pop it was yeah. um, it was kind of cd it was kind of looking at the underbelly and i remember all the stories that i had heard or been associated with in school um my aim once i read coral was that okay such an easy character to make a caricature out of such mm-hmm. an easy character to hate such yeah. an easy character to have a opinion on um how can i humanize her yeah 
um, you don't have to like her. Yeah. But you have to see her as a 360 character yeah. and not just as a 2D figure. Were you scared that, you know, perhaps people will perceive you as... Because Koyal, as you said, objectively yeah. on paper is unlikable. Yeah. Till you understand where she's coming from, her history with her parents and this and that. Mm -hmm. um, even then she's unlikable. Even then she's unlikable. Yeah. So, you know, at that point, I'm, I was scared that, oh, this is like the first significant big budget thing I'm doing. And will I just, will, will I be stuck with this image? I honestly didn't think about it so hard. Huh. Uh, acting happened like very, like as a welcome like almost divine intervention. Mm -hmm. I was a filmmaker. I was in Delhi working at IDIVA, Men's XP. Then I was working at this creative uh, agency. And uh, I used to model. Mm -hmm. And through modeling, I used to get like random TVC auditions and things like that. And then one day this audition came in. I loved your phone, Payan. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank very you. Cute. Thank you very much. <laughs> Diversity. Yeah. <laughs> Just like... Yeah, so I got this audition and I didn't think too much of it. I was like, you only live once, let yeah. me give it. Yeah. And if I can't play a South Delhi girl, then oh. I cannot play anything. So, um, yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so I gave it not knowing where it would take me. I was just excited because number one, like the maker, Osham Aluwalia, who's the... Um, who is basically the showrunner was somebody whose work I had nerded out about in college. I remember like 3 a.m. sitting on campus researching his work. I really loved it. Then to see Netflix on the side of it, uh, then to see that it was a show that had done really well and was, it was on its fifth season and now is on its eighth season at yeah. the time. I think this is amazing. I actually didn't know too much about Bollywood. I didn't know anything about how things work here. So I had like that little bit of a naivete going mm. into it. I was just in it for the art and mm. everything else was secondary but how quickly life changed right after the release yes it did change and i didn't ex i didn't know what change looked like yeah. and i think actually i took um, a week off uh, at the end of the year, you know, in New Year, just to kind of take stock that my life is like this. I didn't know in what direction things would go, what, what getting an opportunity looks like. Because yeah. here also you really have to harvest like a, like a coal mine for a diamond and be like, Haan, I, have, I need to have the ability to be like, yeah, that's a diamond. Yeah. If I polish it hard enough. Correct. So that kind of thing. What was amazing was that this show has only gained momentum and wheels through audience love nothing else yeah. it has just been word of mouth i was like okay normal show comes out two weeks one month max and then you move off mm. you know the the home page but every month was like a new surprise yeah. unlocking because word of mouth to word of mouth to word of mouth and just people were moved whether they liked it or they didn't like it everyone had an opinion and that is success to yeah. me no i think the fact that it had everything right it was it was entertaining yeah i think the arcs of some characters were inspiring yes. there was great shock value yeah right it was also kind of like oh you're seeing two very very different sides of the same city right right because you see it from the lens of Beautifully. two kinds of people yes. And I think it's also a little bit of redemption, but it's also like, oh, people are flawed. Yeah. And, you know, like everybody's arc works differently. Yeah, I find redemption really overrated. Really? You know? <laughs> because that just sets you up on this very like uh, typical hero journey in your own mm -hmm. life. So it's an expectation that I have to be the good person. I have to be the right person. I have to live my life by these higher values and if I can't then I didn't do well at life but life is grey hmm. life is not very much about redemption it's about all the mistakes you make along the way and you have some learning from that whether you choose to employ it in your life or you don't yeah uh, so I really enjoyed that about the show we just recently were nominated among some amazing international shows um, for uh, by GLAAD which is basically the um, you know our show was picked up for its representation of LGBTQIA yeah. plus storyline I think that was the most tender and beautiful part and I was very happy yeah. that that the soft aspect and the loving aspect and the redeeming aspect of the show was in the LGBTQIA plus arc and it yeah. was so well like you know, it was so Indianized in this beautiful way where we were talking about poetry and shairi and philosophy. And yeah. in the middle of that, there were these two people falling in love yeah. for the first time. I found it beautiful. Yeah, that and even I think Veer's character arc goes a yes. little bit towards yes. like redemption. Right? Like yes. he has a little bit of a change of heart through yeah. his like 
this thing. So I'm very excited to see what comes of it later. But you know, the most interesting thing that I discovered about you was that you're an intimacy coordinator, <laughs> and I love that. And Thank I was like, you. oh my god, we have to have a chat. Yes, we do about that. Tell yeah. me what led you to become a qualified intimacy coordinator. Um, what led me to it was that I had um, had the first experience of being an actor in the f uh, on a show like Class, and uh, a, a big part of that was intimacy. Yeah. And for somebody who was approaching acting for the first time to also approach intimacy for the first time, it was a lot for me to understand how to navigate. Like mm. I had to really grow beyond my years to make sense of it. Mm. And the thing with class was that it wasn't like a 30 day project and then you're off. It was that it hit every lockdown. So it was a two year project. So it, for two years, I felt kind of, and all of us felt suspended in this like neo reality this mm. surreal reality where like you know um you are very slowly going through the process and oshim is also a very immersive filmmaker you don't come nine to five to set and then you go home you're just constantly in like a battle of you know what you should do what how the arc will play out so when i was uh, on that set i found the having an intimacy coordinator is really important to the entire process mm. uh, because even the kind of like sexual arc for Koyal's character was yeah. not something that I, <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. I'm so. personally like you know yeah. aware of how to navigate and stuff, and especially how to navigate as an 18 year old character. Yeah. So I really enjoyed having an intimacy coordinator on set. There were a lot of conversations that became much easier. Mm. Uh, knowing that she, uh, that she Asta Khanna was there mm. and that. Um, you know, like my boundaries, my co-actors' boundaries, how they were kind of upheld and things mm. like that. Um, and so through the process, I was like, okay, once it got over, I was like, okay, I'm a filmmaker. I really enjoyed her creating this vocabulary for mm. uh, intimacy. And I think I'd like to see where that goes as well. Mm. So what does an intimacy coordinator do? So an intimacy coordinator um, has multiple facets to their job. But they basically facilitate um, simulate safe simulated sex and scenes of intimacy hmm. on a set. So that could also lead to, you know, you choreographing it for the director. Okay. Or it could lead to, okay, this is the director's uh, chore uh, choreography. This is how they're seeing it. Just facilitate making sure that the actor's boundaries are upheld. Hmm. And, uh, you know, everyone goes back home feeling, you know, like the job was done to the most professional yeah. extent that it can be like so for an action sequence you'll call an action director you won't say okay come on actor start beating the other mm. character mm. up so similarly for an intimacy sequence you call an intimacy uh, coordinator or a director who will kind of see how that plays out because it is extremely technical and then the intimacy coordinator then has conversations let's say when you were playing Kodak, yeah then Asta would have a conversation with you with your co-actor yeah uh, put things into perspective and say that okay this is how it's going to go yeah. Like act one, act two, act three, like that? Yeah. So basically first an intimacy coordinator, like I will first go and have a conversation with the director. Hmm. Also understand what a platform is uh, comfortable uh, showing on their on their platform. Hmm. Uh, then speak to my actors based on what my director is visualizing. Hmm. And then literally put it down in document form. Oh, wow. And get consent from my actor saying that this is how it's going to play out. Hmm. And so that everybody is informed so that on the day uh, uh, you can shoot according to a schedule and you can actually get done versus showing up on a day when you're supposed to shoot something really vulnerable and uh, both actors are kind of caught in the headlights not knowing what they're doing, there's awkwardness, etc, etc. So our aim is to workshop to make sure that the actors have a good comfortable working relationship hmm. so that when we're on set, if 45 minutes have been advocate, have been set aside to shoot this scene. It's not taking two and a half hours and mm. two people having panic attacks. Fair. Yeah. And how many people typically would be on a set when you're shooting eight. in? Eight. Yeah. Okay. So there's eight people on a set, essential crew members. Uh, my job is also, like my job also involves uh, making sure that footage doesn't leak, making sure that mm. there's a responsible data transfer, making sure that... Um, after a shoot is over, the shoguns, which are the monitors on which something has been shot, that the director is looking at, though that footage is deleted. Mm. Uh, so it's kind of looking out for, and especially on sets, you know, like every member on a set, every AD, every DA, everyone has a set role. And they their thing is ki we have to make it to the end of the day, having covered what our schedule yeah. is. 
in a moment of vulnerability, I wouldn't just say for intimacy. I'd say if you're shooting a scene of violence, you're shooting anything that requires an actor to really be open in that moment. It's so important to just have one person who's looking out hmm. for the actor, just like monitoring them, seeing hmm. that they're okay. Most of the times, if somebody's going through distress, it's not a verbal cue, it's a non-verbal hmm. cue. And somebody needs to be alive to those non-verbal hmm. cues and make sure that you're there uh, because at the end of the day, you have a responsibility to the actor and to the production because yeah. every delay an hour is a shoot expense as well. Yeah. So, yeah. But that requires so much empathy then from you to be able to catch those cues also, no? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it does. I, it does. It's So, there is no blueprint. Every time you reach a new set, you meet new filmmakers, you meet a new production house and their crew, the new actors, even the actor on different days in a, or, or in different schedules will be in a different state of mind. Hmm. So you have to just be alive to things that are happening around you and be able to make sense. Tell me something, in Bollywood hmm. uh, or in whatever content that you do for the OTT platforms, what constitutes intimacy? Like is it just um, let's say two actors who are in a romantic set up or can anything else also be intimacy? Yeah. Thank you for asking that question. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, again, because it's very new and it's a very new role and also intimacy on Indian platforms is fairly new as yeah, well. True. Uh, in its new avatar. Um, it, there's a lot of education involved. So this is, thank you for asking me this question because of course, like intimacy between two characters is Mm -hmm. <laughs> something that I can take care of yeah. but also like I was mentioning earlier if there is a scene of violence hmm. scene of like you know so, like a bunch of kids bullying another kid yeah. um, giving birth hmm. uh, you know anything like that that requires an actor to be in a vulnerable state um, it's good to have an intimacy coordinator again it's open to um, actually filmmakers and actors themselves seeing the importance of having somebody there to help you guide what that choreography could look like. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it depends uh, from filmmaker to filmmaker and actor to actor um, where they'd like to also kind of mm. advocate for them having an intimacy coordinator present on set. Because you know, imagine you have a child actor. Yeah. And as you said, it could be a scene of bullying or it could be a scene of violence or mm. it could even be a, a child actor let's say getting slapped or mm. whatever, you know, as a pros part of the process, um, it would make a lot more sense than to have someone who definitely, kind of, you know, who uh, does the hand holding even for the child actor. Definitely. It's very impressionable, I would imagine at that point in time. I do think that in India, I mean, this is still such a nascent conversation. It's only just about coming up in the West about child actors and, you know, um, just making sure that sets are safe for child actors because there are so many different ways in which they can be taken advantage of yeah. or they not understanding the repercussions. Uh, there's also the idea of like, you know, like child actor parents kind of pushing their kids to, uh, you know, like do, making it very reward based. Of course, like you're a child, you're coming on set in an adult environment where you're supposed to behave like an adult in that you have a nine to five work, work life. Yeah. And in those nine to five, you have to be productive. Hmm. Which kid is hmm. going to like, you know, respond to that yeah. kind of environment. So there's a lot of reward based on like, okay, your parent will give you sugar. Hmm. as a way to make you wow. comply yeah. and all of these things have a, they bleed in right hmm. uh, or a kid who's just kind of forming their worldview uh, realizes that when they are performing and when they are complying to a room full of adults they are getting attention and when they are not they are getting no attention so hmm. when they move from a set to their personal lives hmm. it's a big jump it's a big yeah. jump for adults so I can only imagine for a child who's in such a, you know, like in such a vulnerable state of like evolution, yeah. um, what that would be for them. I think that's one of the reasons that Drew Barrymore even got an emancipation, uh, emancipation from her parents mm -hmm. because I think just that child actor life was too much. Yeah. You know, like being at parties when you're like eight or nine and she used to be like uh, drunk with the adults. Yeah. yeah. So I've been, it's a personal, like, it's a personal um, subject for me to nerd out on. So I've been watching because a lot of, like, child actors from Disney and Nickelodeon have suddenly moved into podcasting. Yeah. And uh, there's, there's this one actor called Alison Stoner who just did, a, I think, like a 10-part or a 6-part series because uh, talking about her own um, journey as a child actor. Yeah. And... Uh, 
and you keep seeing like there was a huge thing with Nickelodeon and the creators of Nickelodeon and things like that. I mean, yeah. we stray from the topic, but yeah, yeah it's, it's coming back to it being that um, like child actors are very vulnerable. Another thing that nobody factors in is that when you're doing like a scene, um, say of violence, or you do like a scene where somebody is being domestically abused. Hmm. The actors on set is one thing. There might be a crew member who has come from some kind of background where it's sensitive. Yeah. And you never know you're working and suddenly you get triggered by something that's you being see. simulated for screen. Yeah. So it's not strictly part of my KRA, but it is something that I would cater to that if I see and I'm always looking out for like, you know, crew members or anybody who seems like something's a bit off, then I would take them aside, you know, have a conversation with yeah. them. So basically, you have to be extremely instinctive. Yes. Because in the room, you, you have to be aware to pick up every single cue. Yes. You need to know who is kind of, you know, feeling a certain way, yes. whether it's the actor, whether it's someone who's a DOP or anyone at that point yeah. in time, you have to ensure safety um, of, as you said, data transfer. Uh, but what... What what happens when, you know, let's say an actor comes later and says, oh, I didn't like how this went. Um, so the thing is that there are many different stages in your contract that you can really um, uh, advocate for what is okay and what's not okay. And that's again something that I really... I mean, right now it's on a very one-on-one -on -one basis, but when I mean an actor who's going to be doing scenes of intimacy within their project, uh, like there are many things that you can add into your contract that I didn't know, that I've also learned and now I'm mm. like excited to advocate yeah. for myself, which is things like, you know, you can put into your contract that none of the scenes of intimacy show up in the uh, teaser promotional trailers. Hmm. That's huge. From like you know, I think that's a really. Who would have thought about? Who would have thought right? about? Like it? that's yeah. that's that's new information. Even yeah. I didn't think. Yeah. Or you can be the you you can put into your contract uh, that um, you can have a say on edit. Hmm. You can see the scene before uh, you know it it it's live. Hmm. Things like that, which again, it depends on how successfully you can advocate for yourself. Hmm. Uh, but the thing is that once you have consented then, to doing a scene hmm. and you have shot that scene within the constraints that were already explained to you by the maker, etc., etc., then you cannot revoke consent. Hmm. But till the day that you go and shoot that scene, hmm. you can revoke consent. Hmm. But as a newcomer, so you don't have that much agency now because you're so scared. We're not trying to create a safe space. We're trying to create a brave space hmm. because it is an office setting hmm. if you really look at it. Hmm. Um, so when an actor or a crew member comes um, for a day of work on a set, I want to make sure that I am supporting them to uh, do their job the best that they can yeah. because it, it might be a tough scene or whatever. So it's a brave space for them because obviously there are pa power dynamics at play. If you're a young actor, this is your chance to, you know, make it. Hmm. So, I mean, you can't it's disregard not those things. Hota na. As you said, you didn't know that these are things you could even add to your contract. Yeah. Yeah. These are things you realize with yeah. experience. Yeah. But having the presence or being in the presence of an intimacy coordinator enables you to then speak up if you are not comfortable with Correct. something perhaps. Perhaps. And you can speak to the intimacy coordinator. You don't have to be the one having those uh, difficult conversations. Yeah. If something is, even something as small as, you know, my scene partner smokes and I don't like the smell of smoke when I'm going to be intimate with somebody. Yeah. Even something as awkward and simple as that is a conversation mm. to being like, hey, you know, I know this is the choreography. I don't want to do it for more than two takes. I'll go and have that conversation for you. Mm. But you don't need to be the bad guy in an already vulnerable situation. But you know, this makes me wonder how people were doing it before. Makes me also wonder how people were doing it before. Because actually, yeah. all of this sounds so reasonable and so necessary. It's, yeah. it's almost as though one cannot operate in the absence of this. But from what I've learned and what I hear, like Game of Thrones didn't have an intimacy coordinator. Yeah, so I think even in, in the case of Game of Thrones, the actors have come out and spoken about their experiences. The thing is like, uh, I feel like there are... Uh, like as you move through the decades and as you know that okay there are these uh, aids that are 
to your disposal should you want to use them it just makes life a little bit more enhanced in the way that mm. you want to live like 20 years ago no one's doing therapy yeah doesn't mean that those problems don't exist mm. but if there is an efficient way to deal with your problems then why not like yeah yeah then tell me something i'm curious you're an intimacy coordinator on a set okay we're now imagining and painting yes. this scenario yes do you go and inform let's say the co-actors about what their boundaries should be or what their boundaries for them are are informed to you um so how we go about it is that we have a workshop um even if we don't go through the choreography in the workshop what we do do is set a baseline of boundaries hmm. which is very important so many times an actor who's super enthusiastic you ask them listen are you comfortable are you uncomfortable we'll do anything hmm sure yeah yeah anything are you sure you don't have any issues uh no 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 we'll do anything would you lick this person's armpit maybe not mm. <laughs> then you start thinking because even like i feel like um we don't have those conversations with ourselves like yeah. and i felt this while doing the workshops i was like i actually have never thought about what my boundaries are yeah. and especially as like an indian woman uh i'm almost in this like rhetoric where um okay these are my boundaries but chalega na if i step on them a little hmm. you deal with it hmm. how does it matter but you also condition to believe na that's what i'm saying haan. that's what i'm saying there is like, shit it's Ke not itna adjust kar lo yeah it's my conditioning why should i adjust yeah. if i'm feeling uncomfortable yeah. so we'll play a game of traffic signal hmm. so traffic signal mein green is go orange is um, maybe maybe and red is no hmm. so i'll make the actor sit across closer than Very we are currently sitting yeah 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 we're sitting a little far away but i will first map my own body okay hmm. so bani for you as my co-actor this this is my boundary okay so green 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 orange hmm. for you hmm. okay um green green red hmm. red green 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 hmm. so now you know hmm. that this is where i'm okay being touched hmm. this is where i'm not okay being touched hmm. so for example if i've said bani for you my my breasts are orange means that there is a certain kind of situation in which i'll be okay with you hmm hmm as my scene partner be yeah. touching me within that yeah. scene maybe i don't want to be grabbed yeah but i'm okay if you just brush against brush against hmm so that's a really important thing do you want to try yeah okay yeah show me your it's the same as what you did same as me yeah. okay <laughs> fine so essentially that right and what's really nice and we inculcate is that and it's so nice it's just general chivalry i would like to do it in my day to day yeah. life also but um, if i'm on uh, set with you then i would ask my uh, actors to just take basic consent even if you know what the other person is okay with so if you mm. and i are sitting across from each other and i it's a love making scene i would just maybe ask you pani is it okay if i put my hand on your cheek hmm then that actor decides yeah actually it's okay pani hmm. is it okay if i grab your waist hmm then you decide and so you're actively between those two people without involving the filmmaker the yeah. platform this that me you are negotiating your boundaries and it makes both ca- uh, actors feel comfortable. comfortable and that's so important na because as you said you feel safe then with your co-actor and you know you don't feel like you're being violated in any kind of way in a situation like this if the environment is like yeah, this yeah violation is one thing and the other side is also that you don't i mean you also don't feel like you are violating someone Correct. very or important or that you know um like it's a creative field at the end of the day right you're an actor you're bearing yourself to somebody the other actor is bearing themselves to you there are moments where you can really create beautiful cinema Hmm. and so much of it is in nuance so you should just know what the framework is in within which you can play acting is not a methodical like you know now a is equal to apple b is equal to ball you need to have some room to be able to hmm. play and that's where the magic happens and that's hmm. where like the nuances really come out hmm. and that's what audiences latch on to like those honest moments and things like that hmm. so even doubly uh, more the reason why two actors are so important for them to just be comfortable with each other it's like a dance yeah do you remember one day as koyal playing koyal where you just were like oh my god this looks like a really hard day and i don't know how i'm going to get through it 
maybe in one of those intimate scenes i mean they honestly all of them were really hard for me yeah. uh, i think the the perception at the end of it was that it was easy or that it was a walk in the park it wasn't a walk in a in the park for any of us yeah. we were all struggling because it was the first time any of us were given a chance to act and then yeah. to add this whole other layer on top and then to make it convincing and then to not make it look too raunchy and then to also make sure that okay i'm an 18 year old i'm not meant to be some vixen who's mm. like you know 30 years old like has lived through this entire life experience yeah. so um yeah it was really difficult for me to put myself out there like that it was very vulnerable but um whether it was the filmmaker or it was um the intimacy coordinator or it was my scene partners they were just really supportive in the entire like uh, exercise Process. yeah what did this experience give you hmm. and what did this experience take from you it gave me a new found confidence in myself hmm. i was always the uh person with the most self doubt hmm. and it just made me trust my instinct a lot more Hmm. and what it took from me was uh you know in your early 20s at least for me i had kind of lulled, lulled myself into comfort hmm for no reason hmm. i had a lot to give to the world but i just lulled it into comfort hmm. so for me what i really liked was that it reignited a fire within me hmm. so i was like why am i behaving like i'm 50 years old hmm. i'm 20 X years old like mm. I need to live my life with a passion because I'm probably going to live to 100 yeah. and if I'm already experiencing 50 at 20 yeah. what am I going to experience you can't at 40 to be existential yeah. just yet yeah 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 I think there's time yeah. for that so yeah that's what it did it took so away so it took away the ex- existentialism and it gave you a newfound confidence it took away the procrastination hmm and it sent me into execution hmm and I'm executing so many things and now I'm just like Now yeah. you just go 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 <laughs> and Nana's doing everything. Yes, yes. Uh, you know one thing I was curious about was that we talked about class of course all of you were like young as you said doing it for the first time experiencing it all for the first time it was overwhelming for everybody. Yeah. But speaking uh, of you being an intimacy coordinator do you feel like um like the older senior actors who've been doing it for a very long time and may not have had intimacy coordinators before maybe slightly less receptive to the idea has that been the case or have you heard of stories like that or are they just embracing it because they're just like oh this is great i mean honestly whoever i've worked with has just been really happy and receptive welcoming yeah yeah like i recently worked with uh, mona singh hmm. and she was thrilled she's like this is awesome like i yeah. had a great time on set it was really comfortable and uh, she left like like totally sprightly uh, yeah. so that that to me felt like yeah it's not that you know this is some thing that like the young people are coming up with that yeah. no one needs every set that i've been to and i'm always all on the back front if i'm being honest like i'm like okay who is going to accept me i know i'm coming from a new space i'm yeah. coming uh with a new amount of uh, production budget allocated to yeah. a person <laughs> many things right yeah. but whether it's been the director or it's been the production or it's been the actors everyone's been very receptive and and has been really happy in the process speaking of mona singh can we talk about made in heaven yeah i course. loved you in made in really? heaven how was that experience <laughs> um it was honestly it kind of like we were shooting made in heaven the same time that class was happening oh and uh, so made in heaven the first season i was there for like one scene okay hmm. i don't think anybody i noticed a... you in the second season i'll yeah, be honest exactly yeah. so to give you context when the first season was being shot and i got one scene at that point of time i was a da in a production house in delhi we were making documentaries hmm. never in my life did i think i was going to be an actor wow i just didn't know so i went there for fun like that's my we might have gathered by yeah. now ki mai kar le ha flow kai mai kiya theek hai never thought it would come back ek scene ka character kyun wapas layenge then suddenly you know i'm getting into class and they're like yeah made in heaven season 2 and you're in this season i'm like what hmm. okay <laughs> so that was cool like that came like that's very bad for your character made in heaven great <laughs> <laughs> i'm so happy <laughs> that's great yeah. i also felt super yeah. bad for so yeah it was like one it was 
honestly i kind of was like class was happening like on such a rampant pace at that point of time that i almost had brain fog with made in heaven like that mm. what we shot what we didn't shoot yeah. and uh, when i went to watch the show i was like oh main idhar bhi thi ha main udhar bhi thi oh shit and um, and i didn't expect i was like you know three four scenes who's going to have any reaction mm. to me but it was very important to the storyline also no yeah. because the character was important to how let's say even the uh, lives of the two characters yeah, 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 would yeah, pan yeah. out right but so, that's the thing but yeah. there are like made in heaven is so many characters yeah. every episode you're being introduced new to people. new people yeah. yeah so like little old me kya hoga but I was so surprised at the end of Made in Heaven. Like once it released, people really gave me a lot of love. Like reached out to me, and I was very, very pleasantly taken aback. But you know, that's the thing about that show. Yeah. That because it's very well written, and I think they pick the actors like amazingly mm. well. That wo yad rehte hain. Yeah, you, know, you remember. You remember episode maybe like one maybe villainous character because mm. it stays with you. because a they are written very well and then they pick really really good people to play even those characters and i think that's what makes the show that's very nice interesting yeah. like my favorite thing about uh, experiencing made in heaven was that i got to work with all the different directors so me as a filmmaker like with my background as a filmmaker i just love to be on different sets hmm. there are four no yeah yeah so i got to work with all four of them so for me it was like i was through the moon i was like wow okay this is how zoya works this is how lankrita works this is how nitya works and this is how neeraj works hmm. so that was like you know people die yeah. to reach that point where they get to be on a set and experience that uh process and i got like a cheat sheet to be in there so i was damn happy so tell us what you're working on now outside of we will talk about moment of silence also yeah, because yeah, yeah. we must Thank but you. before that as an actor as anything an actor. exciting that you're working on currently so for me there are a couple of different conversations happening right now there's like a indie film there's a series with acting i really really want to be very intentional hmm. because it's like my one sweet passion that i don't want it to be like that you didn't even know existed that for I a very long know. time yeah. so now i'm like very i cradle it and i want to keep it like i want to do nice thing yeah so i'm taking my time uh, to as you should yeah. i think that's good yeah so i like i honestly i like to work with good filmmakers like uh, and i like to do intentional things which is like even the phone pay ads you know like i was so nice thank yeah. you so nice that book one was really nice <laughs> thanks thanks i think uh, he was also in kho gaye hum kaha na the yes. traffic and he was also in made in heaven he <laughs> was also in made in heaven the first episode maybe yeah yeah, 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 yeah. see you remember na yeah. then one remembers yeah because they're all good actors and this well yeah. written so stays with you true but um, uh, tell us nena now that you know you are being picky and choosy as you rightfully ought to be with the uh, you know your cinema your films your shows uh, tell us about your podcast yes so i as part of the many things that i do because i'm like no one can stop me from doing a hundred things if i want yeah. to one of the newest like ventures is that uh, me and this comedy creator called Sha- sakshi shivdasani we hilarious. have hilarious hilarious girl really yeah. really perhaps probably everybody already knows y- yeah. in case you don't you should look yeah. her up but we decided to start um, just a really like sweet relaxed uh, podcast called moment of silence which is just like Uh, almost like a you know like a simulation of a girlfriend hang yeah cuz i really miss it yeah. i'm living in mumbai away from my girlfriends yeah. who are all back home in delhi and i miss hanging out with them so much and yeah. so we decided to just come together and really vent like all our frustrations as women and uh, it's it's just been very well received how did you and sakshi meet very randomly like i don't even know how we met i think like first to i slid into her dms <laughs> and then the right person's dms to slide yeah, in yeah. <laughs> and then we met like randomly at like these content creator events and i uh, just randomly asked her like listen do you think you'd be open and receptive yeah. and she was fully on board and yeah. i think for us also it's not like we were like best friends before we started the pod but there was like a sense of i know we can we can like volley a conversation yeah there's and, good chemistry yeah. conversationally yeah yeah so so yeah so it just kind of happened like that and uh, yeah that's happening and that uh, of course everybody should watch moment of silence yes please yeah like share subscribe we'll we'll do yeah. that for oh, after yeah, hours yeah, thank after. you thank you yeah but um, but what does nena do after hours to chill 
Oh my gosh, I don't chill. You don't chill. I don't You're chill. just doing the hundred things. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. just. It's like I told you. Like this is my this is my decade. I'm not even say my year. It's my decade of execution. Wow. And I won't rest till I have uh, scratched every itch that I have. Mm. And uh, of course, there are people who are like, you should be focused. You should streamline. You should do X, Y, and Z. That's never worked for me. Mm. None of the plans that I had ever planned and. executed ever ended up being yeah. successful and everything that i didn't think would happen happened yeah so i'm like bhar mein jaye plan <laughs> bhar mein jaye focus main karungi jo mujhe karna hai <laughs> to main main content develop bhi karti hu likhti bhi hu intimacy coordination karti hu moment of silence acting and uh, there's some other stuff that i want to just like put out when it comes out yeah and i'll just keep doing and love yeah, it that's what love it for you and super excited for you but Then now we're going to play the Made in Heaven game with you. Yeah. And you tell us which character fits which situation. Okay. Character, actor, just say man kare. Okay. So let's say who was always late. Who is most likely to be late? Um. Kabir. Hmm. Yeah. Ha. Huh, I would think so too. Yeah. yeah. Who <laughs> is most likely to mix champagne with rooftops? Uh, jazz. <laughs> Outside of jazz, oh, because outside, that too we know. Outside of jazz, uh, maybe Johri. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Who's most likely to encourage a bride to like run away from like a toxic <laughs> marriage? Uh, Tara. Ha. Huh. Or actually, um, Mona Singh's character. Yeah. Yeah. Who? So she was trying very Haan. hard. Also. Oh yeah. She was just like you know, he alienated yeah. her, etc., etc. But yeah, Tara also. And who's uh, most likely to? Um, Call people to make money at a wedding outside of jazz. Call people to make money at a wedding. Yeah, you know the attendees jazz had oh, called. Oh, like that. No? Yeah. Um, Arjun Mathur's character. Yeah. Yeah. He's very like tactical. Hmm. Fair. Yeah. And who's most likely to be like the life of a party? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Never saw that in the arc, uh-huh. but yeah. New York jaake you probably partying only ya yeah? na single single yeah, fully partying why not as it ought to be but thank you nena had a fabulous time i felt like i was chatting with a friend yeah same here mani i'm really really excited to have come on and uh, had my first female podcast host Yay! interaction it's different yeah it's yeah. different yeah. and um, everyone please watch moment of silence and uh, like share subscribe and now you can do the needful for me <laughs> <laughs> everyone please like share subscribe if you want to see people like me uh, smriti irani <laughs> kiran baby <laughs> does that work yeah okay. it's it's all fabulous women yes if you want to see fabulous women and men yes we should subscribe to after us yes done